is anytime you're in a position like this where you're responsible for people, it's a lot of challenges. But you have to stay consistent and be wholesome and fair and always tell the truth with it. Phoenix City's on the verge of a lot of changes, right? Yes, good changes. And a lot of those changes involve the riverfront, right? Yes, exactly, which is, as I say, very mission critical to Phoenix City. Um, it, 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 the timing it, right now is, is is right now. We have to get it right right now, if you've heard me say it several times. I think we're at a point right now that it's a reciprocity between Columbus and Phoenix City because of the river. And I made a statement some time back is that that river has been transmuted of Phoenix City in Columbus, which means, as you know, we're taking something of value and both of these cities are turning it into something you mean transmuted of, or transformative? Transmuted. What I mean by that, and look at that, Phoenix City and Columbus is taking that river that has value, but we're tr turning it into something of greater value. And, and I hope this doesn't get me in trouble, but when you look at our size, because of the natural trees and all that, I think that can give us a little bit more opportunity than it can Columbus. And if things keep going the way it's going as far as us managing the money, we may can because there's a lot of opportunity that we can capitalize as far as putting new businesses on the river as well as working with the housing authority. That's a part of it. Did you ever think you would see a zip line across the river where people... No, I uh, never thought, but that's that's why we, we, Columbus and Phoenix City, has transmuted that river. And we need each other. Phoenix City needs Columbus and Columbus needs us. And the great thing about it, the leadership of Columbus and the leadership of Phoenix City recognize that. Why has that not always been the case? Well, it goes back to leadership. As I say, you know, Columbus needed us and we, we need Columbus. And how you put a value on that, you really don't want to because if it's bringing value for people, it's bringing value for both sides. What did Coach Bryant teach you about leadership? The, the number one thing, Chuck, that I learned from playing under Coach Bryant, and my, you know, my parents, I come from great parents who was uneducated, but taught us values. And, I, and just to, before I answer that question, I go around and tell you, you know, when, when growing up in our house, if we didn't say yes ma'am and no ma'am and yes sir and no sir, I mean, that deserve whatever you got from my parents. I say that to say all of this. They taught me those values and how not to just think about yourself. To always learn to share and give with people. Well, by us having to say yes sir and no sir, and you know, after getting a few licks for not saying that, you know, as a kid, you you grow up can grow up saying, "Well, I'd be so glad when I leave, man. I won't have to do this." But lo and behold, when they get to the University of Alabama, it's enforced even more. You follow? Me? I got so you. those values. But the greatest thing I learned from playing from Coach Bryant that I try to bring every day at my job, here at the bank, and everything I do when it comes to people and working with people is to that I learn how not to be jealous. It's all about the team. It's never about you. And you know, my dad being uneducated, sharecropper, uneducated, I mean but nothing was given to him. And even to this day, let me tell you this, that man believes to this day, if you have to get up to go to work by an alarm clock, your job and the people you're responsible for are working with, they are not important to you. He, he doesn't, he's never used an alarm clock. I mean, that's just how stern and disciplined and strict he is. I mean, if you tell him, he will tell you, your job is not important to you. And the people that you work with, and for it, they're not important to you. I mean, simply because, you know, you use an alarm to wake up. What does Phoenix City look like in 10 years from now, after you've had a chance to put your stamp on it? Well, I'm hoping this is continued to be progressive. I'm hoping that it, it would be a place where people wants to come and our population has grown. I'm hoping that, like I said, the vision of this council is that 1.9 trek from 280 bypass all the way to 3rd Avenue where the Whitewater and the 
Plaza is. We're hoping, and I'm hoping that that's a long-term vision, but I'm hoping that that corridor, along with all the other things we're doing, will be something for people to talk about, where they can have a, a wow experience. And, and in order for us to get there, the mayor, myself, and this council got to be faithful, honest, wholesome, forthright, and true. And one of the applications I look, I use in my life, Chuck, now this is an application I use, and again, I told him, I'm kind of a Pollyanna utopian guy and look at the best in people until I see otherwise. That what keeps me grounded as far as how I'm going to treat you and other people is this. It starts with how I treat my wife. Now, it's the application I use now. It's, ain't, it's probably not for anybody else. And then I do want you to pray in this. If I can't be faithful and honest and love her and do what's right toward her, what in the world are you or the organizations I work for going to expect for me, from me? And that's the application I use. Do you hold other people to that application? Yes. Yes, you got to say about it. It starts with my wife. So you watch how other people treat their families. The, the, particularly their wives. Because again, if I'm not loving her, being faithful to her, being loyal to her, and telling her the truth, what in the world are you going to expect from me?